Visitors have fond memories of spring break. Business owners can tell you a lot about the money they made over the years. But ask a law enforcement officer about it and they'll tell you a war story. Mayhem. Mayhem that became overwhelming for the men and women asked to keep everyone safe. The battle over spring break had been building for years as then Sheriff Frank McKeithen, some local residents and others tried to convince the Panama City Beach City Council and the Bay County Commission to pass laws that would stop spring breakers from coming to town. On the other side were business owners who had millions on the line and bar workers who could make a year's salary or more in a single month. The worst aspect was supply and demand. When you had 25,000 18 to 22 year olds here, you had a tremendous demand as the world changed for things like oxycodone, marijuana, even the heavy, harder heroin, coke. We had the laws on the books to control that and we didn't do it. And it, and it got out of hand. It got out of hand in a lot of ways, not just drugs and guns, but MTV had given way to a new form of entertainment, Girls Gone Wild. Joe Francis, the man who made public nudity into a multi-million dollar business, also made headlines around the world when he came to Panama City Beach. And the city's law enforcement leaders, like then Panama City Beach Police Chief Lee Sullivan, worked to convince him to stay out of town. Francis was arrested on child abuse and prostitution charges and spent nearly a year in jail in 2008 until he pled guilty in the case. Oh, I was here when Girls Gone Wild guy was here. He offered me $40,000 for my upper deck one day. I kicked them out. I said, you and all the SWAT team will be here. What do I need you for? The problems were felt all over the place and in certain places more than others. An easement near Pineapple Willies and Club La Vila was cause for concern. That used to be called the spring break buffet because all the kids would be coming back from the beach were inebriated or sunstroked or in the afternoon and then that, they did stupid things. Kids do stupid things and they did it when I was a kid and they still do. At night, in the parking lots and in the streets, it got so bad that law enforcement officers sometimes retreated in the face of hostile crowds. Always outnumbered, but, but to a point that was, was concerning. They were not cop-friendly crowds. By 2013, law enforcement officers were seeing massive problems. We pulled 100 illegal guns off the street. So we, we went from a situation where you're talking about, you know, college spring breakers partying and, and doing the things they they do, which is which, uh, you know, creates a issue for law enforcement uh, and, and resources and, and managing that type of crazy behavior. Another problem, the massive spotlight brought on by the national media. Each year, the latest designer drugs flooded the area with names like Herbal X, Scoop and Bath Salts. Tragedy also struck multiple times each month when spring breakers on scooters were killed in accidents or died when they fell off balconies. Fox News personality Sean Hannity made spring break a focal point of his show several times, and reporters from all over the world came to town each March in hopes of showing the wildest things they could find. It was an unnatural disaster of man-made proportions. Spring break in Panama City Beach started with bus tours to the sandy beaches, but it ended with gunfire right here around 1 a.m. on March 28, 2015. David Jarmichael Daniel shot seven people during a house party. Ford was one of the first people to arrive on scene. I've likened it to being in Afghanistan, you know, where seven, seven kids shot and had, had some of them they had them run out of the house. They were in the median of the road. They were laying in the road. They were in the house. Um, you know, people trying to frantically run from the scene, a shooter still at large, a, a massive law enforcement response. Shortly after the shooting, as their deputies and detectives worked to solve the crime and save lives, McKeithen and Ford got together to discuss the situation. He just kept saying, I told him this was going to happen. I told him this was going to happen. And, um, you know, I think we agreed at, at that point that th that was going to be a, 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 an inflection point for change. Daniels was convicted of the shooting in 2016. He was sentenced to seven life sentences. That same year brought the changes law enforcement leaders had been hoping for. The Panama City Beach City Council passed strong laws that convinced most of the college spring breakers and the criminal element that came with them that they were no longer welcome. By the time it ended, there was plenty of blame to go around. All of us, especially the club owners, we should have been more proactive. Uh, we talked about it. We contributed to the spring break funds, but we didn't do enough. 
However, as we'll see in the next part of our series, the end of college spring break did not mean the end of good times in Panama City Beach. Our destination is long moved past spring break. It, it will never be a college spring break here again.